Please rise. May we act with strength and benefit of good guidance to perform our duties honestly, wisely, fearlessly, and well for the good of those we seek to serve. Before we get started on the meeting, we were discussing just before we began the meeting, uh, one of our colleagues, uh, Councillor Horgan, who is in hospital, and um, we wish him every wellness and uh, hopefully comfort in his time of uh, health issues. So um, I'd just like people to know that. So. So I call the meeting to order. Uh, are there any late items, Ms. McWilliam? Thank you, Your Worship. There are not any late items. Thank you. So we move to approval of the agenda, and there's a motion to approve the agenda to circulate. Moved and seconded. Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Opposed or carried? So we move the adoption to move to the adoption of minutes. We have the May twenty second regular council minutes and a motion for adoption. So moved. Moved seconded. Any discussion on those minutes? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. June fourth minutes special council meeting and the adoption of the minutes uh, motion. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Any discussion on those special minutes? All in favor? Opposed? Okay, motion's carried. Thank you. So today we have a very special guest in our audience, and as a delegation, we have Sonia Bursnell, the MLA, uh, and uh, you're going to be briefing us on provincial matters from the last uh, couple of sessions, I would imagine. Yes. And welcome. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, great to be here. Thank you, Council, uh, for having me. I'm, I'm delighted to just give a brief update. Uh, I already spoke to CBRD, so I thought today I would frame it a little bit differently in terms of uh, something I'm sure that everybody at the council table understands, which is purpose. And I think a lot about uh, purpose these days and uh, what motivated me to get involved in politics in the first place, obviously, was what was happening in Shawnigan Lake. And then what motivated me to uh, to consider pursuing provincial level politics was recognizing that what happened in Shawnigan was not so much uh, an isolated issue, but really a symptom of a bigger problem around decision making, land use decision making, uh, processes uh, by which uh, permits are issued in this province. And so uh, there is something called professional reliance that really underpins so much of the decision making in BC, it was introduced in about 2002. And I realized that I really had a purpose uh, to, for why I wanted to run for provincial government, which was to see if I could affect a change at that policy level so that other communities wouldn't have to endure uh, really what we went through in Shawnigan. And I'm, 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 I can report some level of satisfaction that we are going to see a report on professional reliance coming out very soon. Uh, today, the provincial government announced uh, its revitalization of the environmental, uh, sorry, the, yeah, environmental, <laughs> oh my gosh, it has been such a long day. Um, uh, uh, environmental decision making process, oh my goodness, I should pull up my notes. But uh, a revitalization of the, the process by which uh, there are environmental assessments are made in the province. And it's a significant shift uh, in terms of looking at the ways in which uh, decisions go through that environmental assessment process. Uh, and I think that it's a very positive shift. We're, we're looking deeply at, uh, at all of the implications. But I think that it's, it's a positive thing to note that we are making steps in the right direction in terms of land use decisions, but we have a long ways to go. And one of the ways that I recognize that is the number of communities that continue to reach out to me who are concerned about their water sustainability in their communities. And so everywhere from Wymere in the Kootenays who have a very fragile uh, quartz watershed uh, and they're concerned about logging there, uh, Merville up island where there's a 
permit that's been issued for extraction of water for sale in a bottling water bottling plant, and they're concerned about their aquifer and the depletion of that aquifer. Uh, of course, I'm hearing from a lot of uh, communities around mining issues or forestry issues, and so we still have uh, a big conversation to embark on in this province around um, how do we how do we make land use decisions, particularly large land use decisions, in the face of uh, the very significant shifting realities that uh, we have with climate change. And then uh, that brings me to last week when I went to the Cowichan water use planning meeting uh, up in Lake Cowichan on Monday evening and uh, was there for the recommendations that came out of that planning process, which was a, a, an amazing uh, consensus building planning process and it came up with the recommendations ultimately of uh, raising the weir first by 30 centimeters and then uh, after addressing the concerns of the, the landowners around Couch and Lake, uh, ultimately raising it to 70 centimeters, recognizing the uh, threats to the Couch and River. And then following that up with a meeting at the legislature with the Watershed Board um, and realizing that uh, in the face of of the, the rapid changes that we're seeing, and I think Cowichan is a, is a perfect example of that with, the, with what we're seeing with the river. Um, not only do we need to shift how we make land use decisions, we actually need to shift into recognizing that we may need to invent new kinds of solutions because there aren't, there aren't the precedents for the kind of solution making that we need to do in this, in this changed world. Uh, and that, will require quite a bit more uh, intergovernment cooperation and recognition. And I think this is something that's happening in communities all over uh, BC and I would expect all over Canada. Recognition that the costs associated with adapting and mitigating the effects of climate change cannot be borne slowly, s solely by the local governments and the communities that are feeling those effects. That the costs have to be shared and in fact, probably the upper level of governments, I wouldn't say probably, absolutely need to take the lead on recognizing that those costs can't just be left to local communities to deal with because they are too significant uh, to take on as individual communities. So it's been an interesting couple of weeks now that we're out of the session to be uh, really rooted in the work here in Cowichan and to be recognizing how uh, so much of what is work going on here is also happening in other places in the province and seeing that kind of reinforcement of that primary purpose that got me into politics in the first place. Uh, and then uh, another purpose that has certainly emerged since I've become MLA has been around the child welfare issues and I was at uh, the, chem uh, the select committee for appointing a new representative for uh, the representative of children and youth. So that work is underway. I'm also on the select signing committee for children and youth uh, generally. Um, and there is a, an increase. There were, there's a 12 part article, a uh, series of articles in the TIE right now, which I highly recommend people look at in terms of really shining a light on uh, the extraordinary challenges in the child welfare system that are happening across the country uh, and here in BC and right here in Cowichan and looking at, again, solutions to that and looking at ways that we can work across jurisdictional lines to start serving children and families far better than we are right now because uh, how we take care of our children and how our, our children are thriving in our communities is really one of the most important things that we can focus on. So that's become another very significant purpose since I've uh, come into this. Uh, in terms of the, uh, the issues in, in, in Duncan and in Cowichan, obviously the hospital, that process, the uh, concept plan went into Island Health in December uh, and we're awaiting uh, that process to play out uh, and hopefully we will hear news on that soon. Um, and same with the uh, high school, where I know that uh, the, the school district and ministry staff continue to work on, on finding the solutions that we need to be finding on, on getting a, a new high school in, in Cowichan. Uh, and so there are uh, 
Many, many things that uh, continue to work, we work on all the time, both at a local level and at the uh, more policy provincial level, but really recognizing that um, communities all across BC all have essentially the same fundamental needs and wants and desires uh, and challenges in terms of how to fund those and uh, I am of the mind as I was when I was at CBRD, I remain very much so that we're going to do our best when we work together uh, across jurisdictions, across party lines, and uh, certainly within our communities to, to uh, move things forward. So if anybody has any questions, that's me at, a, at the end of a 12-hour day. Yeah. Well, first, I'd <laughs> like to thank you for coming because uh, I'm trying to think in my whole term, uh, the last time we had an MLA come, mm -hmm. our MLA come and actually <laughs> give us an update on the provincial issues and the work in the legislature. So yeah. I think um, I want to congratulate you on that. I think it is uh, very appropriate um, to and to understand uh, from your communities that you're representing uh, what the priorities and issues are for mm -hmm. us as well. So are there any questions from council at all for the MLA? And could you speak into your microphone too, please? Councillor Jackson. No, I'm good. Oh, you good? Yep. Councillor Bell? You always first, so I waited. <laughs> um, thank you for coming, and uh, I just uh, wanted you to know that in the community, I'm, I'm hearing really nice things about you, <laughs> and just about how pleased people are, um, about how quick you can get things, and how e approachable you are. So, just some feedback for you, and um, I don't know, being on the select committee, that's awesome, that's cool, I watch what they do. I've sent them submissions, <laughs> videos from youth. We've done a lot around mental health with them and some yeah. suggestions. Um, and of course the representative, I watch that very closely, all their reports. Uh, Mary Allen is, was a hero of mine. Um, but um, actually she came to our 40th, Mary Ellen came oh, to our 40th nice. anniversary at our work. But Lise Erickson was here on Thursday. She's the executive director from the ministry, I'm sure you know. And her and I had a probably a two-hour conversation about the state of the children and youth in the community with our manager from MCFD. So this is my other hat mm. for work, but um, they're well aware. Apparently, mm -hmm. they're well aware of that Cowichan has been missed, and it's uh, mm -hmm. um, d unique. I think they said <laughs> it's unique with its issues. <laughs> so I don't know if that helps. I think if we're just continuously putting it on the table and not letting them forget about this community. Um, yeah, for, thank you for doing your part. I think it's gonna take a village for sure. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And I really appreciated the tour we got from you. Uh, it's, it's great to, to be as informed as, po as possible as what's happening on the ground and that was really a helpful insight into the great work you're doing. Uh, and I would also just point out on July 29th, there is a Know Your Rights workshop put on by I think I think it's co-hosted by the MLA's office and um, represented for children and youth, uh, and that's at the the CM Lam gym uh, on the 29th. I believe it starts at 11 a.m. But watch for uh, information coming out about that, and that's open to anybody in the community in terms of uh, raising awareness about uh, rights of parents, rights of children, rights of families, uh, and how to navigate through. Uh, you know any kind of uh, any kind of work with the the child serving system, um, uh, so that that's a great opportunity to to get people out and to get people informed. And and I just wanted to say, it, it's really I, I really appreciate the kind words. And and I I meant to say it at the beginning, but of course serving the community is is a driving purpose. Um, being in service uh, is really important to me, and it is. Uh, no small feat. There, there is such an extraordinary need, uh, and I'm. I do want to identify the hardworking people in my office who who are doing such great work uh, every single day. And Jane Rosenberg, Trisha Dattene, uh Maeve McGuire, Kayla Brent, Luke Cross was with us until a few months ago. Uh, and our volunteers, John Mowat Stephen was with us for quite a while. He's in Ireland, or he's in Europe right now. And um, uh, Aaron and Mariana Podolsky, who, so they, they are in incredibly hardworking and incredibly committed to the community. And I, I just, nothing would happen 
uh, without them because that's what we need are the people that are able to keep the files moving for the individuals and they've done some tremendously wonderful work. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Duncan. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, thank you for the update, Sonia. Um, I know or I, I can sympathize with the frustration of having to deal with regulations that are handed down from the province uh, that directly affect our local communities with the soil. And thanks for the work on the weir, but I, I still I have concerns around the river and the water licensing, the way it happens mm -hmm. or doesn't happen, and how long it is for, and where the mill ends up having a, a more of a say than the local community does. So I would really like to see that uh, included in your, uh, if you're reviewing provincial rights to dump in our backyard, I'd also like to see some change around the water, how the water licensing system works so that local people can have a say on what happens with our river. Oh, and absolutely. In fact, those conversations are happening. I was having one in the car on the way down here exactly about that. Um, that is a, an essential part of the solution making uh, for Cowichan River and for the Cowichan Valley is recognizing that the responsibility for that water license really needs to be picked up and, and I'm not uh, hiding my position on that, which is the province really has a responsibility to, uh, to pick up that license responsibility. So uh, I'm working on that. I've made that very clear to them. Uh, and I think that, again, and I've also been very clear about the urgency, uh, that this isn't uh, someday, sometime, this is, you know, we are, we are already recognizing uh, the symptoms of drought and uh, for yet another summer, and we're running out of summers. Any other councillors? I have one question. Go ahead. With respect to the um, health crisis and the opioid crisis uh, around the province, and I've had an opportunity, uh, Councillor Duncan and myself met with Solicitor General a little over a month ago, and we brought the issue up, and with respect to how the order from the health minister uh, in response to what was clearly an emergency mm -hmm. uh, situation um, has had an impact in small rural communities. Um, so I'd like to know from your perspective or your party's perspective, um, and I've challenged this with Island Health as well and, and, and the province with respect to um, what kind of bolder actions, because mm -hmm. it's, it's clear that from evidence that it's not working, mm -hmm. uh, it's not, uh, lives are being saved clearly, there's no question about that, but it's, it, we're, the still the overall number is increasing. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, and, and I, I met with um, some staff from Island Health a few days ago, and I was, I was actually quite surprised to hear that the, the use of the Overdose Prevention Centre has actually doubled in recent uh, weeks. And that, that was um, quite a, a, an eye-opening uh, figure to hear from them. And I think that what we talked about, and I think that the, the, the overall conversation was about um, that is about pulling people out of the river. We want to get upstream and find out how they're falling in the river, metaphorically speaking, uh, and how do we prevent that from happening upstream. And I, I anticipate greatly uh, the, what will be coming forth from the, the new Minister of Mental Health and Addictions as there's a, um, you know, a commitment from her to be presenting a lot of solution-oriented uh, programs and funding in communities across BC, and some of those have begun, but I think that, again, you know, Michelle, we, we recognize that Cowichan uh, really has a very significant need on this front, and we need to be looking at prevention, at support of the kind of work we're doing for youth and mental health in particular, uh, looking at uh, education, and, and, you know, when we lose counselors in our school, how we're losing those moments that we can start working on prevention at a young age or recognizing the symptoms and, and being proactive because it's far better to, uh, to be addressing these problems before they become full-blown. Uh, and if, 
if we put our efforts into that upstream work uh, at the same time as recognizing we, we can't stop the downstream work, but hopefully the upstream work means that the downstream work lessens over time. That's the goal. Uh, but I think that, y you know, I remember right after the election, we talked a great deal about all of the crises. There, there seemed to be an abundance of crises in our province. And I would say that we're still here. There's still an abundance of crises. And uh, I think that um, boldness and recognizing urgency, but also creating policy that looks at not outcomes uh, necessarily just limited to short term. We need to be looking at 10 and 25 and 50 year outcomes and begin to be developing policy uh, with that kind of thinking in mind, because I think we've we've for so long kind of been in reactive policy making. Well, that's my definition of bold. Yeah, is taking the right policy action. Yeah, as opposed to the short term yeah. answers, which satisfies certain constituents but always dissatisfies other sections of constituency. So, long term yeah. bold action is necessary. Yeah, yeah. and and you know, election cycles aren't particularly conducive to that, but I think that with, uh, e with leadership and with uh, recognition that um, we're the world doesn't operate on, on four-year cycles. The world operates on much longer cycles, and it is our responsibility to be thinking well beyond uh, four years when we're, when we're making decisions or trying to make decisions. And so uh, this is something that's very important to me as a, as a person, and it's also very important to our caucus, is to, to really insist on shifting to longer term thinking when we're, we're looking at policy making. Okay, thank you. And thank you again for coming. Thank you very so much. much. Appreciate it. Absolute delight. <laughs> we look welcome, we're, we welcome you coming back again, anytime. I will. <laughs> Invitations open. We certainly do good work here. Um, I will ask for the report of the Chief Administrative Officer. You have circulated that to Council on their desks, and uh, if you're just going to touch on the highlights. I, I will, Your Worship. Thank you. Uh, the Trans Canada Highway Boulevard is the project, uh, the design contract has been awarded and is in process and will uh, include the design of a new multi use pathway and landscaping along a portion of the corridor, and that should get constructed by the end of 2018. Seine Road uh, Water Project, I've updated Council on that a couple of times. The North Couch and City staff have confirmed an approach for a joint tender for construction in 2018, so that's uh, good progress on that. The consultants, Lanark Consulting, have completed the initial round of public consultations at the Cairns for the Cairnsmore Neighborhood Plan and the McAdam Park Plan. This included farmers market attendance, open houses, and events in the park. The Place Speak uh, site is still open for the McAdam Park plan until Wednesday, June 20th, so still open for feedback on that before uh, progressing to develop, developing the draft plans uh, and for the next round of consultations. As most are aware, the referendum is upcoming uh, for amalgamation on June 23rd, Saturday, and there is a remaining advance poll on Tuesday, June 19th, that's tomorrow. There is the, Im the information on the You Decide website, youdecide.ca, continues to be updated with new frequently asked questions. Residents are encouraged to sign up to the website so they can be advised as soon as new material is posted. The first advance poll uh, had very good turnout. We had uh, 151 ballots cast in the first advance poll itself, plus 80 ballots cast in the mobile poll. Uh, for comparison, in 2014, for both advance poll days, there was 265 ballots cast, plus 112 ballots cast in the mobile polls. While this is a hopeful sign for strong en engagement, it doesn't necessarily translate into an overall increase in turnout. For example, the 2014 election saw a shift to more advance voting, however, there wasn't an overall increase in turnout. 
the communication of the amalgamation referendum results uh, will be posted on the city's website on the evening of the 23rd, and we will uh, staff will also email directly to council, so you'll you won't have to keep hitting refresh on the website. A special joint meeting is being scheduled for Monday, June 25th, to officially receive receive those results and, if necessary, appoint the transition consultant. And lastly, the property tax notices were sent out in mid-May, and the tax due date is on June 3rd. Sorry, July 3rd. Uh, if a person has not yet received their tax notice, please call City Hall as soon as possible. Thank you. Okay. So we move to uh, reports of staff. We've got item 7-1, which is the um, uh, Duncan's 2017 annual report and a motion to uh, receive so it moved. as presented. <coughs> That's moved. Yep. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Um, I just want to comment on staff. Uh, it's always a tremendous job that you do to put this together. I know uh, I'm not chased too much to get my piece in, and, and I usually do well in advance. And... Uh, but I do thank thank you for the prompts, and uh, it I uh, am very impressed by the by the look of the report and by the information contained in it. And uh, I expect that we will win another award for this annual reporting, as we have for many years uh, since uh, the major improvements to the to the report. So, the the whole uh, idea of a report is for transparency and to uh, prompt engagement with the community. So I re really encourage. Uh, all, any citizen to go online or anyone with interest to go online and review the report and, and provide feedback uh, to us in any way they would like. So thank you, staff, very much. Thank you, uh, particularly those lead. To Lisa, I know that you lead this, but uh, everybody p plays a role, and so um, thank you so much for that. So any discussion or questions on the report? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. So we move to item 7-2, which is a uh, temporary liquor license extension for Just Duke's Restaurant. Um, it's uh, quite a long um, motion with a number of uh, uh, descriptions in it. Um, it is on your agenda, and if somebody would like to move that, it's quite... I move uh, that. It's a regular uh, event every year. Right, so it's just to extend his liquor license for uh, Duncan Day and right. the celebrations Correct. around that, and so I quite happily move it. Thank you. Yeah, they do it for two days, of course. Yep. All right, any discussion on the recommendation, motion? No, hearing none, all in favor? Opposed, motion's carried, thank you. So we move to item 7.3, this is with regard to the 150th Council and Exhibition Catalog Advertising, and a motion that Council directs staff to purchase full page advertisement in the 150 150th calendar and exhibition catalog for $380 from the city's general administration budget and the council direct staff to amend the communication plan to include the annual purchase of a full page advertisement in the council exhibition catalog. Yeah. Moved, seconder, thank you. Any discussion? Councillor Duncan. Uh, thank you, Worship. Um, I know we're moving to change this and specifically include it, but wouldn't it already be included under the broad definition uh, as listed here where it says uh, tourism related publications. I think that this would qualify under as a tourism public related publication rather than for us to actually have to change and, and, and then we're putting in a specific publication each year and we do sometimes buy other ones. I think that it's already covered under the existing wording. Um, and I would, I would support it. Uh, I see that the ad in here is for last year. Um, and I, I'm speaking in favor of it because uh, I think we can use the new totem pole and we just recently had some tourism banners and we're using the new totem pole for those banners. I think that that would be great to put on the back page because that was our 150th uh, sesquicentennial uh, grant and, and, and project that we had done and that fits right in with theirs. So I guess a couple of things. I think it's already covered under existing wording, but if you really feel that we have to change it, uh, fine. But also, I think that we should use our, uh, our, our totem. I'll let staff answer the question specifically. With, so and obviously, there was a recommendation to change it because 
staff felt like they needed guidance. So. Yeah, staff just felt that this came forward for last uh, at last year's uh, around the same time to uh, get council's approval, but we didn't uh, recommend at that time a change to the policy. What we're doing here is so that you don't have to keep seeing this every year if the intention is to move forward that we just change the policy. Otherwise, it's left up to the tourism committee every year as to what ab, um, publications they think worthwhile in, in doing so. And I think it's debatable, I suppose, whether it's a tourism-related publication or just the program for their particular event. So, you know, there's lots of different programs for different events, say folk festival or others that might come forward. And I think this just provides clarity that this is one that council uh, has chosen to support since 1998. So uh, there's a long history of of uh, advertising in this particular publication. Thank you, Councillor Jackson. Um, Mr. Dubertai pretty much said everything that I was gonna say. I don't think it's a tourism pamphlet as much as it is for um, locals, but other than that, I definitely agree with uh, Councillor Duncan about <coughs> using our beautiful new totem, if at all possible, in the ad for this year. It would be great. Thank you. I'm gonna call the question if there's no further discussion. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion's carried, thank you. Move to bylaws. We have the uh, item 8-1, which is financial plan amendment, and the council give first three, re three readings to the financial plan amendment bylaw number 3177.02-2018. Moved. Moved and seconded. Um, Ms. Silvera, would you just like to give a brief overview of this amendment? So uh, over the last several months, we've been getting regular updates for council uh, regarding the work that needed to be done at the Eagle Heights uh, Reservoir. So this essentially just uh, makes sure that the funding for uh, paying for the repairs to the tank is included in the financial plan. Funds are coming from the surplus for the water fund for Great. the year. Thank you. Any discussion on this? All in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. Sorry, my phone is ringing in my ear. <laughs> Very distracting. Um, so we move on to item um, 8.2. This is the business license agreement by number 3117.02-2018, mobile food vending. Um, and a motion for the three readings. So moved. Moved and seconded, thank you. Any discussion on this? Um, Mr. McWilliam, would like just give a brief overview on this? Or Mr. Dibbert? Yeah, I, I can do that, Your Worship. Uh, th this is a very similar bylaw to what was presented at the Committee of the Whole, which covers off the uh, mobile food vending uh, regulations as the new zoning bylaw uh, permits uh, mobile food vending in commercial and community services zones. The bylaw is based largely on regulations that were developed th by North Couchin in their recent updates to their business license bylaw, which was through quite a public consultation process that they did. We did make some minor tweaks to sort of uh, fit it to the Duncan context. Uh, one in particular is that the, the regulations for North Couchin are that the, the vendor must seek um, a pr um, support of uh, any restaurants within a 30 meter race radius. We've increased that uh, within this bylaw to be a 50 meter radius, so it's just a lar slightly larger circle so that it captures uh, sort of the downtown uh, Duncan context. Other than that, uh, there's a few minor changes to the bylaw that you saw at the uh, Committee of the Whole that just removed some of the items that we felt could just be done with administratively rather than have it right in the bylaw itself. Great, thank you. Discussion? Uh, thank you, uh, Your Worship. Through you to Mr. DeVette. If you uh, had any feedback from the Downtown Duncan Business Association on it? Uh, it's good that you mentioned that actually uh, through Your uh, Worship. Um, the initial meetings with the BIA were, were very supportive. Uh, there, that was, however, under the previous concept where the BIA would actually have some form of a uh, approval process in, in as well. Rather than go down that road, we, we chose to mirror the North Couchins one about just approval of the jurisdiction and that's in fact why we decided to increase the radius slightly. Uh, that doesn't mean that of course we wouldn't be consulting with the BI regularly. We do that on East Street closures or whatever in the downtown core but we thought that putting in a specific regulation regarding that approval process um, gave them a, a veto as opposed to a, a consultation piece. So they, uh, I haven't heard feedback one way or the other as to whether they 
are upset about that, uh, but it is a change from what they had been uh, previously um, presented with. But thank you. Okay. Any further questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion's carried. We move on to item 8.3, which is fees and charges amendment bylaw 3182 2018, emergency shelter temporary use permit fee and mobile food vending license fee. The council give three readings to the fees and charges amendment bylaw um, with regard to what I just explained. So, so moved. moved and seconded. Is there a seconder? Second. Thank you. Very good discussion. Again, probably should have just a brief um, overview for the public's uh, purposes. Thank you, Your Worship. So this bylaw touches on two uh, fee amendments. One is, as m noted, the uh, a fee, fee amendment for a, a slightly higher fee for mobile food vendors, which will be $200 uh, if on uh, private property, $500 if on public property. This mirrors the fee structure that North Couchin had developed. Additionally, this bylaw also introduces a reduced fee uh, for a emergency and extreme weather shelters. As council has previously discussed, the, the fee of $2,000 for a temporary use permit uh, application was uh, felt to be a, a bit um, onerous if a nonprofit was looking to uh, ask for council's consideration of a temporary use permit within the city. Uh, so that has been reduced to, uh, as proposed, to $250 for that specific circumstance. Great. Any discussion on the motion? Moved and seconded. All in favor? Opposed, motion carries, thank you. So we move to bylaw adoption, item 9-1, which is the automated vote counting system authorization and procedure bylaw, mm -hmm. bylaw update number 3181-2018, and that council adopt the automated vote counting system Moved. bylaw. Moved? Second. Moved or seconded, thank you. Any discussion on this? Ms. McWilliam, would you like to speak to it? No? Your Worship, I believe, well, you would have seen this last month, I understand. Uh, this amendment will provide some clarity around the advanced voting procedure when an automated vote counting system is being used. This will enable the Chief Election Officer to authorize the use of closed ballot boxes, which uh, will mean that during a mobile voting opportunity, they'll be able to not have to ask for an automated vote counting system or technician. And Okay, any discussion or question? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, move on to new business. Is there anyone with new business? Uh, hearing not, is there any councillor who would like to report out on our fees? Okay, Councillor Ross, anyone else? I'll just uh, touch on a number of things since our last council meeting. Um, I attended the uh, D day ceremony along with Councillor Jackson at the Cenotaph on the 6th of June, on obviously um, D-Day. Um, it was an excellent ceremony. Um, uh, I have to congratulate uh, Ben Buss, our town crier, who's getting uh, more and more adept at that bugle, uh, which is a very challenging instrument to play. Mm -hmm. I give him all the credit at, at attempting it. It's uh, There's nothing really to change the notes, but your, uh, and there's so many things that can go wrong, but he's doing a great job and, and getting better and better at it. So I mm -hmm. encourage him to carry on. Um, I also uh, that evening uh, attended the uh, Cairns Moore local area plan uh, community consultation meeting at the guide hall. And uh, I was really encouraged by the turnout. There was a really great turnout there. Uh, the neighborhood really came out and they really got uh, into the engagement process and uh, provide a lot of input to the planners. Um, I think it was well well executed and, and people really appreciated it. Um, that's all, of course, only the beginning. Um, there's a lot more to follow in terms of engagement. And uh, so I encourage the, the neighborhood specifically, especially to, to keep, uh, keep engaged on that. Um, I uh, attended on the 12th uh, housing focus group, which was done prior to the public consultation on the housing initiative uh, from the regional district. Uh, it was a smaller group. There were um, uh, landholders, uh, rental building 
owners, developers, real estate people, um, and a number of others in there. And I thought the the conversation was very, very good. I was um, I wouldn't say I was surprised, but I was heartened to hear um, that the development community wants to be part of the solution as well, um, and uh, the real estate community as well. Um, uh, as all of us, you know, have been touched by challenges in in family. It was nice, it was interesting to hear per their personal stories as to uh, people that they're connected to having um, challenges in these areas. So um, I think that w it was a very good conversation. I think the um, the um, Couch and Housing Association was able to garner some really great information from that focus group, and I would think that they will probably do more. I also attended on the Thursday night, the 14th, um, the coalition um, uh, meeting, housing coalition meeting, um, and again, again, the work towards the co collective impact of bringing as many people to the table as possible with respect to their influence on um, what can be done with respect to that. Um, I also attended the McAdam Rotary Park uh, Pizza in the Park on that Thursday evening. And uh, I want to give credit to our planning staff and the consultant, Lanark. Uh, it, it, was, there was, it was great. There was a lot of really great one-on-one -on -one, uh, engagement with people. And, and there were the people just simply going uh, through the park. And uh, we had, uh, I, I made a little joke with Councillor Jackson earlier that uh, because one of the guys was wearing a crest, the under 80 soccer team yeah. was out on the field. Um, and that included uh, guys like um, Ernie Mansweaty mm -hmm. and many others playing on the, the field in Rotary. Um, he threatened to put me in goal. I think that would have been unfair. There's no way they could shoot fast enough for me in that chair. I would have been able to stop every shot easily. <laughs> would have been a shutout. Anyway, uh, they obviously come and have a great time and the feedback from them was that they, they love the facility, they love the park and they're um, very enthusiastic about being able to be there and, and do their activities and it was great to see it being used. Um, and I think I'll just leave it at I did uh, attend uh, as well the Island Coast Economic Trust uh, uh, Regional Advisory Committee uh, in Ladysmith on Friday. Uh, and um, I was uh, re-elected to the board by the RAC. We both regional advisory committees elect four members of the regional advisory committees to the board of Island Coast Economic Trust. Uh, and then I'm elected as uh, board chair by the board. Um, I also met with Kathy McNeil, who is the new CEO for Island Health. Um, uh, it was very great to engage with her on uh, Friday. She asked for the meeting to introduce herself. And I brought up, similar to as I did with the MLA, uh, with respect to the op opioid crisis and the overdose prevention sites and what model they see going forward that might change uh, the approach. Because I think uh, it's quite clear that um, this approach is, is uh, a band-aid, it's not a solution, and there's a lot more that needs to be done. So uh, I think they're uh, very well aware of that, and uh, but they're not necessarily in the driver's seat on, on this at this point. So um, other than that, I think that's, I'll just leave it at that. There were other things, of course. Um, and we move on now to proclamations. We have one proclamation. Sorry. Oh, Councillor Jackson, sorry, I didn't mean to skip over you. <laughs> that's okay, thank you. Um, you covered most of the things that, that I, I went with you to um, D-Day, which was great, and on June the 6th, I was also at the Karen's Moore workshop and was very impressed with the number of people that showed up. The place was choked, actually. I think there was close to maybe 90 people there. It was wonderful. And uh, Saturday on the 16th, I attended in the morning at McAdam Park when they mm -hmm. had sort of community engagement. Um, and they had people come and you know fill in what they wanted, everything from parkour and climbing walls and jungle gyms to I don't know what else, but they had like mm -hmm. a lot of feedback and, and that's exactly what we were hoping for. So I was happy to be able to attend both of those things. Um, and just a quick reminder that uh, the next advance poll for the amalgamation is coming up this Wednesday, 8 o'clock to 8 o'clock at City no, Hall. It's tomorrow. Tuesday. It's tomorrow. Tuesday. It's tomorrow. Tuesday. It's tomorrow? Tuesday yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. Tomorrow. Tuesday. And um, uh, and then the, the actual vote is uh, on Saturday, and that's at the fire hall, 8 to 8. So no matter how you vote, this vote is the most critical vote 
for the last 40 years, basically. It's even more important than voting for council because it's gonna set the direction uh, for Duncan and presumably for North Cowichan too for the, for the next, for the foreseeable future. So I just encourage everybody to please get out and vote. Thank you. Okay, so we move on to prop proclamations. Um, we have one proclamation, which is uh, the council proclaiming July 21st, 2018 as a global day of inclusion in the city of Duncan. Is there a meeting for that? Thank you. Seconder? Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion's carried. So we move on to question period. So uh, there are no public here uh, in person. Um, any questions from council? I actually don't have a question. I just have a comment. I just wanted to uh, thank the team for the seventh year in a row. Is that how many years we've been doing this? They came out to the wheelchair rugby. Um, they raised about $10,000 and they're going to be replacing a bunch of the chairs uh, because they're in pretty rough shape. My tire fell off three times. Um, and yeah, and it, we had Emmett um, and Allison uh, and Peter and I this year and we were a good team. It was fun. And uh, it was a good game. We lost, but we we were close. We were That's very competitive. We were very close. <laughs> and I really enjoyed watching it from a wheelchair all day. <laughs> it, was, it was a good, fun event. I got, must say our rookies did very, very well. They were awesome. All right, so we, uh, we, we moved to a motion to go into closed meeting, so that the meeting be closed to the public under Section 91C of the community charter to discuss matters related to labor relations or other employee relations. So moved. It's moved, seconder, thank you. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries, we'll just take a five minute